Hello everyone, welcome to my channel 3 Diast. So if you want to create a design like this, here you can see I had created this hopper inside seat metal workspace. The shape is getting changed from a rectangular opening to a circular opening and also you can generate a flat pattern out of it. So just follow me each step that I'm going to show into this video and you can also generate any complex designs inside seat metal. So let's move on to Fusion 360 and start design. Here is the new design. Now the first thing that we'll do, we'll click on this save icon and we'll save our design. I will give it a name, Hopper. I will make sure that I am saving this into the right folder. I will try to save this into my YouTube folder. I will look for my YouTube folder. I will go back and we'll look for my YouTube folder. Here it is. I will click on save. Now you can see that the name on the top just got renamed. This means the file just got saved, but it doesn't have anything at this moment. Now the next thing that we'll move on to this browser, that is the design browser, and we'll expand this document settings option and we'll make sure that the units are millimeter. But if you want to use some other units, you can change this unit. So to change these units, just click on this icon that you can see over here, click on it. And then from here, from this window, you can select the unit that you want to use into your design. I will press cancel at this moment. And third and the last thing that will make sure that is this design history at the bottom. It must be turned on because whatever the steps we are taking to design our product, it must be tracked. So if you want to make any changes, we can go back to the design history and do those changes. So this was all about uh, the setup. Now let's start creating the model. Now, as you can see, we are inside this solid modeling workspace. So all the tools you can see over here are related to solid modeling tools. But the product that we are going to develop, the model that we are going to make is out of seat metal. So what we'll do, we'll move on to this seat metal tab, we'll click on it, and then we will be able to see all the seat metal tools. Now, before we'll start, we'll make sure that we had did some more setup inside this seat metal work environment before we'll start modeling. And the first thing that comes into this is this seat metal rules option that you can see over here. So we'll click on this one. And the moment you will click, you will see a window will pop up like this, where you can see right now it says in this design, steel rule is already applied. So since we want to use some custom material and custom thickness and we i don't want to use the predefined rules so what i will do i will click on this new rule option that you can see over here this option this icon that you can see over here i will click on it and then i can define my new rule so let's write it some custom material and then i will also give it a new thickness let's say i want to use two millimeter thickness and rest of the things I'm not going to change at this moment, but if you have all those information, you can do that. I will click on save and here you can see the custom material just got applied as a new rule into inside my sheet metal rules. And then I can click on this close option. Now the next thing that I always suggest to each designer who are doing sheet metal designs inside, inside Fusion 360 is that if your complete design is having just single sheet metal component, then you can simply start making the component because by default in Fusion 360, there is always a top label component created. So you don't need to create more components if your complete assembly is having just single sheet metal part. But if your assembly is having multiple sheet metal components, then I always suggest that just forget about this parent component, try to add one at least one more child component inside the sheet metal workspace. So here you can see right now we are inside the sheet metal workspace. I will simply go on to this create option and we'll click on this new component. And then inside this new component, I will give it a name, Hopper, and I will click on OK. I will keep the rest of the setting as default. And here you can see just new child component got added inside this parent component. So if we'll expand this child component, for this child component, there is a rule that is by default got applied and that rule is steel. But we already created a new rule, custom rule few minutes earlier. So I will click on this switch rule option and then here we'll select this new rule that says custom material. I will select this one and we'll press OK. Now for this child component, we just applied this new custom material that you can see over here. 
now we are ready to start creating our sketch and since this component is already activated here you can see this says that this is right now the active component so whatever the steps will do whatever the steps will take to create designs it will be getting recorded inside this component only so i first i will click on this create sketch tool and then we'll select this top face as a sketch face now at the bottom of our hopper we have a circular opening right so we'll activate this circle tool and we'll define the center of the circle and then we had to define the diameter so let's say i want to keep the diameter as 100 millimeter so i had written 100 and we'll press enter so even if you'll forget to give the dimension at this space and accidentally if you had press escape so you will be getting a circle like this so no problem what you can do you can move your cursor back to this new sketch dimension tool you can reactivate it and then you can click on anywhere onto the perimeter of this circle and you can drag outside and input the values let's say i want to keep 90 so i can write 90 and we'll press enter now what i did i had created a circle using the center point and a diameter of 90 millimeter right and this circle i had created onto the top plane here you can see that i will click on the finish sketch and now if i'll click on this home icon to go into the default view isometric view here you can see i had created a circle onto the top plane and how you can verify that it's a top plane so if we'll turn on the origin from the design browser here you can see there are three planes top front and side plane so we had created this one onto this top plane now the next thing is that uh, if the hopper that we are designing the one side of it is uh, circular whereas the other side of the hopper is rectangular in shape so what we'll do we'll create another rectangle at different plane but before that what we'll do we'll create a parallel plane we'll create a parallel plane at a particular distance from this top plane so for that we'll move our cursor onto this construct panel we'll expand this one and here you will find a tool that says offset plane so i will activate that here you can see offset plane just got activated i will select this top plane that we want to replicate and then i can give the height like how much offset we want to keep so if we'll go on to the right view so i can estimate the height and this one let's say we want to keep uh, 150 millimeters right or maybe a little bit higher 200 millimeters and we'll press enter so now if i'll go into the home view so this new plane just got created at a height of 200 mm from this plane on which we created this circle now this plane is very small in size so we can simply click on the edges of this plane and we can drag it to make it look bigger so it's completely free like you can drag it and make it as much big you want right now this is the new plane we added and the moment you will add this plane the moment you will offset and create a new plane you will notice that inside your design browser a new folder just got added that says construction so if we'll expand this construction folder you can see this is the new plane that we had created now what we'll do we'll activate the create a sketch tool again and this time again i will select this plane one that we had created as a sketch plane i will click on it and now we are creating a sketch on this plane so on this plane we want to create a rectangle of our defined size so we'll go on to this create panel tool we'll expand it we'll expand this rectangle tool and we'll select this center rectangle tool here you can see the tool is active i will define the same origin point as a reference and we'll create a rectangle of size 150 and we'll press tab to move on to the other side and we'll press 150 and we'll press enter and again if you forget to input these values if you had uh, given some wrong values what you can do you can simply double click on it and you can edit those values as well but you have to be inside the sketch environment to edit these values so we are done with these two things and before we'll come out of this tool uh, i want to add one more thing onto this sketch so if i'll expand the sketch folder first i will turn off the sketch one because right now we are active inside this sketch too right so whatever the sketch that you will see at the bottom right now we are active in data sketch so in this sketch what i want to add i will activate this simple line tool and from this point to this point uh, here you can see i had created a line why i am creating this line because right now this complete profile is closed profile using the four sides but I don't want this profile as a full close profile. I want to break it at some point. So for that, I had added this line. And now I will use my offset tool and I will select this line and I will offset this line by on both sides. I will make it two sides 
and the distance 0.5 so it will offset on both sides by 0 0.5 0 0.5 so it will make 1 mm of gap between this line and this line right i will simply press ok to create those lines now i will activate my trim tool from this modify panel you can see this trim tool and then i will trim down just by dragging onto these areas i can trim down these two areas because i don't need those areas now before i will move forward i will select all these three lines and will change these three lines to construction line type so here you can see what i did now this is not a continuous profile it got trimmed at this area by one millimeter of a gap so this is what we wanted to do for this sketch i will click on this finish sketch here you can see it got a break over here now i will turn off the sketch 2 and will turn on the sketch 1 here you can see now we are going to edit the sketch 1 also we have to create the same opening on the same location so if i turn on the sketch 2 you can see the opening is coming on to this side so we'll try to do the same on to this sketch also so we'll turn on the sketch 1 only and we'll make a right click on this sketch and we can edit this sketch we'll click on this edit sketch again i will activate this line tool and will connect a line like this completely vertical line you can see the vertical constraint is applied and then we'll activate this offset tool the same process that we are we are following that we followed earlier we'll change this distance to 0 0.5 millimeter on both sides i will press ok then we'll activate this trim tool and we'll trim down these areas and then we'll select all the three and we'll apply this construction line type here you can see i will click on the finish sketch and now i will go on to the home view i will turn on both the sketches and here you can see we had created two different sketches at two different uh, planes right and we we also have that distance we can control from this offset plane command so now we'll try to connect these two shapes and for that what we can do we can go on to the create panel and here you can see a sketch that says flange right you can see the sketch that says flange so we'll activate this flange tool and the moment you will activate this flange tool there are two different types of flange one is the edge flange and other is the lofted flange so we in this case we're going to use the lofted flange so we'll activate this lofted flange tool and then we have to select both the profiles so first i will select the bottom profile and then i will select the top profiles and here you can see it's automatically getting lofted from circular opening to a rectangular opening but again we have multiple things that we have to check first we'll go on to the home view like this and this is my rectangular sketch here you can see so right now my profile is getting extruded towards outside by two millimeter if you remember we had applied a custom thickness inside our custom material as two millimeter so we can change the side of the extrusion if you want to make it on the other side we can change it from this command here you can see also if you want to make it symmetric on both sides like 0 0.5 sorry one millimeter on both sides you can define this as a center here you can see but i want to always want to keep as side one i mean the outer side of it so whatever the sketch or the dimensions that we are providing we are getting those exact opening on the inside so side one works perfect for me uh, most of the time and then in the forming tool i you always try to create this uh, break form because in that case uh, it's possible to get these profiles by using which if you are if you want to fabricate these products on in a real work uh, environment then these lines you will need so i always keep this one as a break form but if you change this to die form you lost those lines and uh, this is basically for the die purpose but i don't want to make it for the die purpose because if you are if the seat metal thing then definitely we're going to need these things and then i'm not going to change the other options i only have to make sure that i'm creating this as a new body so all the time the operation I, it's selected over here as new body and then i can press ok and the moment i will press ok it will take few seconds to process and here you can see we just created our design uh, in a sheet metal from rectangular to circular now the most important i'm going to show you now the most important part is how we can get the flat pattern out of it because if you want to fabricate this from sheet metal first you have to laser cut it from a flat sheet metal right so how to create a flat pattern it's very simple 
simply go on to this flat pattern create flat pattern tool activate this tool and then you have to say specify the stationary face so let's say i want to keep this face as a stationary internal side of this face i will select this one and then i will press ok and it will automatically generate a flat pattern for me so here you can see this is the piece that you have to cut from your flat sheet metal and then you can fabricate it you can bend it and get the shape so this is the piece that you you have to utilize and if you want to use this piece if you want to send this piece for the laser cutting purpose definitely you have to export this as a dxf file format so you also got the option over here you just simply have to go and click on this export export flat pattern as dxf and then you have to press ok and then you have to define the name of this file let's say i will write hopper and on desktop i can save this file and this just got exported as a dxf file that we can send to our vendor to laser cut it and the moment they will cut we can get back the product that cut it sheet metal and start folding it to get our shape exact shape now i can click on this finish pattern tool and here is our design so all the time the moment you will click on the finish pattern tool all the time under your component you will find that flat pattern active so all the time if you want to see it just turn on this one and you will be able to see your flat pattern so this way uh, you can create shapes like this complex shapes like this inside fusion 360 very easily uh, and also all the time you, you have complete control over design for example if you want to change the height of this product simply go and change the offset plane distance click on this edit feature and then let's say i want to keep only 150 i can change this to 150 and we'll press ok and here you can see the product just got updated also the flat pattern you have to turn it on and then you have to wait for a few seconds and that will also get updated in few seconds just click on the finish flat pattern tool and here you can see the updated new design so it's pretty simple so now if you have any question just comment below into this video you can comment on to my channel you can comment on to my videos i will try to answer you i will try to help you if you have any confusion or if you want to learn fusion 360 don't forget to follow my channel subscribe to my channel because so this is the only way you can support to me support to my channel guys thank you thank you so much for watching see you in the next video